it's in all of us. The basic drive, the will to be more. Only a few have what it takes. Only some have the gut and the will to make it. The strongest fail here. The trick is to never stop. The Otter African Trail Run, as, as the name suggests, is a trail run on the Otter Trail. And the Otter Trail is one of the most beautiful trails on the planet. It's 42 kilometers of pristine coastline. Just being in the National Park is, is a special, it's a special thing. And people come from all over the world, 365 days a year to hike on this trail. And for one day a year, actually two days a year, they close the trail down and allow 440 athletes to participate and run the trail and then we've got a group of athletes that, that fascinate us you know us the organizers are, are passionate about people who can actually move that quickly in this type of terrain it's arguably one of the toughest endurance races in the country and for the sixth time it hits the garden route at the end of september thursday saw the official launch take place for the otter african trail run 2014 in cape town so after the entry process, the next highlight is the launch. And the launch sort of peaks the anticipation that, uh, that people are feeling heading up to the art uh, run. All the top athletes are there. Uh, all the top athletes are announced. The new prize money structures, the incentives, they're all announced at the launch. And everyone gets together and you can actually feel the excitement building. It's, it's tangible. And knowing my competitive nature, I'll, I'll probably go for it. And even if I blow, then I'll probably just stop and uh, <laughs> go for my ultimate dream of seeing a real life otter on the trail. <laughs> Sandpox channels, are you all working off your digital tank channels? And the first day is registration. So the athletes arrive and, and, and go through the registration process. It's quite a thing to see people arrive and just appreciate this wonderful, spectacular environment that they're in. Then down to the serious business of registration. Uh, all their uh, credentials are, are checked and then they go through the kit check. The South African National Parks guys, they sterilize all the shoes and they've collected over 27 different species of plant that have been carried to the event on their equipment and shoes. And then the athletes have to run the prologue. Tutsikama, the heart of the garden route. The reason we're here is the Otter Africa Trail Run 2014, where more than 40 kilometers await some of the toughest athletes around. First up though, day one, the prologue, which gives runners the chance to set the pace and make sure that the front of the grid, so to speak, come race day. So, prologue, distance 4.1 kilometers, elevation going about say, 250 meters, single track most of the way. You're gonna head towards the big registration thing. Put it over there and wait for it. Go! But the top 25 men and the top 10 women get started in a separate batch called the Abangeni. These are the challenges and these, these are the contenders for the race. Enjoyed the otter and it's one of my favourite routes and, and races to run. So I'm definitely going to give it my all. I, I feel that I've, I've prepared well for this race and I'm really ready for it and excited for it. If I have a good day tomorrow and everything goes according to plan, I, I should, do, should do a good term and, and, and should be able to break that 4.55 at least. <laughs> Everyone who's, who's, who's making a serious attempt at the Otter wants to get into that Abangeni. 
And so there's a big excitement to see who's going to make it into the Abangeni every year. Tabang, tell us about the run today. Yeah, it was nice. I enjoyed it. It's kind of my type of running because there were a lot of down runs and it was undulating all the way and felt good all the way till I reached the final dipping station. Then 1955 came possible. Feeling good also. So I'm ready for, for tomorrow. Hope my body will respect me and I think uh, anything will be possible for tomorrow. Well, I might have the fastest time on the Reto. It's only been run once, so that record's there to be broken. AJ, I know, is definitely going to be in contention. Tabang, he's always fast. Keep yourself close enough so that you always have a chance to, to, to win. So it's that balancing act of trying to run conservatively, but not too conservatively that you now out of the running. Welcome to the Otter African Trail Run presented by Salomon and Goo 2014. Um, it is a great privilege for me uh, to welcome you here on behalf of our sponsors, on behalf of our hosts, South African National Parks. Welcome to the race briefing. Now it's very important that you understand as a participant, this is what you have entered for. Okay? With the Otter, can you get hurt on the Otter? Let me tell you, there are some places where you pass as close as I am to the edge of this thing, this stage to a 50 meter drop onto rocks, maybe even an 80 meter drop onto rocks. And if nobody sees you fall off, if you do fall off there, if nobody sees you, we won't even know where to look for you. You will disappear as if you've been abducted by aliens. I'll just read the Abogheni, uh, blitzing the course. I think it's very close to the record of this 19 minutes 55 to Bang Madiba. Malakaya Mzizi in, in, from Naizna in second place. Gary Mullen third. Nicola Griffin ran an amazing 23.43 to lead the ladies up again, followed by Lundy Kralik, Anita O'Brien. Okay, those are the provisional lists for the starting now tomorrow. Good luck, guys. The top 25 uh, got underway, started off on the beach. The pace was initially quite conservative. We thought the guys would flatten it out on that, on that fast stretch on the beach. They were quite conservative and they headed off into the hills. So the next great excitement was to get to Blokrans and see who was going to come through Blokrans River first. Who's actually going how fast? And with the incentives, uh, the 100,000 rand up for grabs uh, for the sub four hour, we're very interested to see if anyone is going to be flying in there. 
Mike Bailey holds the record for coming to Bloke Ranch and at the time we said he was going too hard and we turned, we turned out we were right, he was going too hard at that point. Um, so it's going to be very interesting for us to see uh, who's coming through and how fast they go and what sort of times the guys are running at Bloke Ranch. AJ was actually in front now, so he was making a move. But he wasn't more than 30 seconds in front. Ian non Washup was behind, crossing the river. And Sabang Madiba was there right with them 30 seconds behind Ian. So the top three men there, all very close together. And from then on, it was uh, a race to the halfway point, to the Gumanji point. The race was on. You're exactly right there. Right there. Come please. Over the hole. Okay. Come please. Seven In the women's race, closely together, very, very close together, was Lundy Kraling, Nicolette Griffin, and Sudan Washup. They were all within 10 seconds of each other crossing the river at Blow Cross. And so that, that women's race was panning out to be a very, very exciting race. This is the moment of Drew. Um, the first three females have passed through about five, ten minutes ago. So. At halfway, the gap had closed slightly, and uh, AJ was still in front, but right with him was Yandon Washop and uh, Tabang Madiba. Sorry, we to get to the next arch. Um, what's the back gap, guys? What's the gap? This is where you actually look into the guy's eyes. And now you look as a race organizer, you know, we, we, we're obsessed with this race. And you know, with a guy like AJ, uh, he's never going to leave anything out there on the trail. He's going to give everything. You just got the sense that there was just not, he was not altogether 100% in control. I think, I think this time it's mine to lose. So, yeah, let's hope for the best. Really worked hard at it and, uh, you know, done, done good training and the season's gone very well so far. Uh, but, yeah, it's no secret that I've been a little bit uh, upset with not having, you know, one coming so close. So let's hope this year AJ has been under the, the radar, but I know how much this race means to him. I, I think third time lucky for AJ, I think he's perhaps going to take it. Um, AJ is looking super focused. Um, I know he wants it really bad. So it's tough to count him out, but Ian looks like a man with a plan. Um, and I think the professor's got something up his sleeve. I expect Ian to open it up in the last quarter of the race. And combined with, with the athletic side of the event, there's a big environmental side, a big conscientious or awareness of, of our environment that, that comes with the event. And we're very proud uh, of, of, of the way we propagate that and the way it resonates among, among trail runners. We've always said trail running is not a sport, trail running is a movement and, and our event reinforces that. One of the great exciting things that we had at this year's Otter is Mark Boucher. Now Mark is a legend of South African sport. Now Mark, being Mark had enlisted the help of probably the best guy in the world to help him get through this and that's Ryan Sands. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see, see Mark Boucher kind of really putting his hand up and, and taking on such a, a difficult trail run. It, it may sound like it's only 40Ks, but it's, it's a really difficult 40Ks. Even I've raced all, all around the world and I can say this is really up there with some really tough races. So uh, yeah, I really uh, chuffed to, to see him kind of uh, putting his hand up and, and taking on such a great cause. 
Marx um, started his own charity, the Castle Lager Voucher Legacy Foundation. And it's obviously, um, he's very involved with protecting our endangered rhinos and it's great to see him actually really getting stuck in there hands on. He's on the ground, he spends a lot of time up north. Uh, Report comes through from Ngubu Hut, five kilometers from the finish line. It's a Medibas in front. It's got about a two minute lead on Ian, and AJ seems to have dropped off a little bit there. So AJ is obviously hurting a bit, and they get onto this rocky section. We don't know what is going to happen. We're standing at the finish line, there's great expectation. There's a big crowd there. They're all waiting to see who's going to come through first. We see the professor, Endon Wasser, coming in for his third victory. Fantastic. There with the Mark Collins and Berlin Collins. The organizers hold this man new retro record and the fastest South African ever. While we hear the tears, let's bring in our second man. Who is it going to be? Tabango AJ. The South African long distance champion is going to take second place here at the Otter. What a person, what a runner, a great guy. A true advertisement for the sport of trail running. And I thought, you know, I mustn't give up. I must just keep going. It is just unbelievable. I mean, I just got to praise the Lord. I'll be praying and praying. I just, uh, just a bit disappointed in my result, but I, I really gave everything. Flip. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't really have gone any harder. Are you going to keep coming? Will I come back and race it? I don't know. At the moment, please don't ask that question. <laughs> I really don't want to answer that. Now. I'm sure you'll be back. Looking relaxed, smiling, that trademark relaxed smile on her face, Landy Kralin. And, uh, and what a delight for her to win the race. Not far behind her, just a few minutes separating them. So graceful, so efficient. Nicolette Griffin comes across the finish line. And then Sue Don Washop, who's been on the podium of this, of this three times before. What a family, the Don Washops. Get goosebumps just, just thinking of, of what they achieved in this race. I actually said to the guys, I'd rather face Sean Tate with no shoes on and, and batting with a stump uh, than, than do this again. But, uh, you know, maybe in a, a couple of months uh, I might look back and say, you know, let's, let's, let's see if we can maybe do it again and, and make it a, a good event. I think I'll train a lot more differently uh, for, for the next one if I do come back and do it. You don't get more beautiful scenery than this. And very rarely, the scenery like this provide the backdrop to a race. That race being Otter Africa Trail Run presented by Salomon and Goo. It is one of the toughest races on the planet and it takes place in the heart of the garden in the Titikam area. You know, in rugby for me, the hardest guy I ever had to tackle, without a shadow of a doubt, was John Olava. Without a shadow of a doubt, he was the toughest guy to bring down. I'll face John tomorrow. It is Hayda. Because that, that was that was really really hard.
you have all our heroes come here Ricky Lightfoot, Tien Don Washup, AJ Collett, Lundy Kraling, uh, Sudan Washups, and then to have on top of that some of your sporting heroes, guys like Mark Boucher, Corne Kricher, Warren Brosnan, Marius Herter, taking part. It's, it's, it's a fantastic event. In actual fact, the real heroes of this whole uh, event and are, the, are the people who made the decision all those years ago to conserve this part of coastline. And, and in, in retrospect, everything that they did then uh, makes everything that we do now pale in, in significance in, in, by comparison. And hopefully uh, this event will get the message out there uh, that these areas do need to be conserved and the conservation of them is, is critically important. We need a place uh, where our souls can dance as humans.